All right, guys, you ready to go to work? Ain't no free lunches around here. Hey y'all, once again, we're discussing grid down and how you can put a solution in place without breaking the piggy bank. So y'all have heard us mention many times we're a first world country with a third world power grid. Instances of grid down are happening more frequently and lasting longer. So that begs the question, what can we do about this? Well, you know, uh, the first and foremost in every situation, you can do nothing. You know, right? not a great choice. <laughs> Just deal with the but inconvenience. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to do that. Though. Yeah, no, we don't <laughs> want to do that. Uh, if you're on a really tight budget, you know, you can buy small power banks uh, with a solar piece to it as well. At least to keep your gadgets charged up and whatnot. Yeah. Or generators. Uh, uh, yeah, you could do portable generators. You can do whole home generators. The order of magnitude difference in cost there. I mean, you can get an okay generator for around 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the ALP propane generator because propane doesn't have a shelf life like gasoline does. But I mean, you can still buy uh, gasoline generators, Lowe's, Home Depot, and not five, six, 700 bucks that'll do the job. Yep. Once you get into whole home generators between paying the electrician, getting your permits, you know, putting a, a propane tank in place with a significant amount of, of fuel in it, you know, you can spend ten to $15,000 in the blink of an eye. What about those solar PV systems? Uh, photovoltaic cells, solar PV, yeah. So, you know, the average house, uh, for a, a PV system with a Tesla wall, say for a battery backup, is in the fifty, sixty thousand dollar range. Really depends on how big the house is. Big investment. Uh, you know, we haven't even done it to any of our houses because uh, at our age and our fifties, the ROI is not there. To be quite frank, yeah. Um, you know, if we were younger, maybe we'd consider doing that. You got to also consider the average American stays in their house for seven years. Oh. That's that's the average. Okay. So it doesn't typically increase your property value enough that you can justify spending the money on it. But, you know, I know where you're going with this. Yep. <laughs> or we had other options. Yeah. So Portable ba battery uh, power stations, backup systems like this one. So, so. just to qualify that, you know, uh, Tesla uh, does some underhanded things with their channel. So meaning their sales channel. Okay. Um, value added resellers, whatever you want to call them. See, Bubby's coming in here to get in on the action. Hey, buddy. Attaboy. Um, so they advertise the, the Tesla Powerwall, 13,000 watt hours at $10,000. Meanwhile, their channel partners, value added resellers, de dealers, whatever you want to call them, when they get called out, they do an inclusive quote. Uh -huh. So so it's, it's the Tesla Powerwall, it's the installation, it's the permits, it's the accessories. It's $20,000, full stop. So people hear the 20,000, they're like, man, y'all are ripping us off. So they call Tesla. Tesla sends a salesperson on site because they heard them say $10,000. But right. when the Tesla sales rep leaves, it's $20,000. <laughs> and, you know, one way or the other. Same story. Yeah, but they, you know, a lot of instances they'll sign up with Tesla and the poor dealer gets the short end of the stick. Just because the brand recognition or whatever. Yeah, well, usually what happens is the dealer gets first crack at bidding on it. And they're like, screw that. I seen them for $10,000. Tesla shows up and they're like, well, it's six to one half dozen to another. And yeah. they sign up with Tesla. Right. It is at least that's, I have a lot of connections in the solar industry and that's what channel partners are telling me. So I got just enough knowledge to be dangerous. It means I can sell it. Doesn't mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> doesn't mean that I'm a, a subject matter expert completely, but you know, some better solutions that we've been looking at in the past year, Denny are modular solutions. Right. So you have to have, you know, an inverter, so that it can take this the solar power that's coming in from the panels and convert it to you know 120 volt AC power. Right? Speaking of solar panels, there's some there's some tax advantages to solar panels, right? Yeah, and that's that's kind of where I'm going with this. So if you buy these scalable solutions, uh, this unit here is a good example that we'll get into in a mi minute. Is that let's just say that you only had enough budget to buy this top piece here, okay? So that's an inverter and a 2330 watt hour battery. If you buy a small solar panel with it, and if you have a tax burden, meaning that you owe taxes at the end of the year, uh, you can claim both the power station and the solar panel on your federal taxes, get a 30% non-refundable tax credit. So next year you have a little bit more money to spend and you buy an expansion battery and you buy another small solar panel, you can claim the 30% on that and keep going. And I, I believe they've extended it out to 2030 or 2032, something like that. It was going to be kind of phased out, but, the, you know, they brought it back again. So long story short is that th these types of systems, and this is the Dabson DPS 2300, 
and the DBS 3000, which is the expansion battery, is that you can do it in bite-sized chunks. You know how you eat an elephant, right? <laughs> little by little, I suppose. <laughs> One bite at a time, okay. right? So, you know, the, the trick is you want to have enough power uh, to especially look after your refrigerator, okay? Right. So uh, refrigerators, you know, if you, we have more experience probably than other parts of the country. You know, it's hurricane season. Uh, it's not unusual for us to have extended grid down stuff. Yeah, by the way, if you hear some thunder in the background, we've got one of our thunder, uh, winter, uh, summer thunderstorms going on here. Well, we're, we're in the eye, so nothing's happening right here. We're not getting rain on. There's no lightning, but there certainly is off in the distance. Otherwise, we wouldn't be out here with electrical <laughs> equipment. So uh, if you run your refrigerator 45 minutes a day, uh, that'll typically keep your food good for a whole day. That's a rule of thumb here, okay. you know, in uh, Hurricane Central. Essentially, that. what it boils down to is, is uh, it doesn't put a huge draw on a system like this. Uh, if you wanted to run it continuously, depending on what the draw is, what the wattage was, uh, you could be anywhere, say, from 15 to 30, 35 straight hours of being able to run off a system like this. But again, if you're only running it 45 minutes uh, a day, you know, to keep your refrigerator cool, that kind of translates into uh, running your generator for about an hour a day. Okay. So if it's a gasoline generator, as a general rule of thumb, burns about half a gallon of gas per hour yep. on average. It, again, depends on the draw. Uh, so for a gallon of gas a day, you could keep your batteries charged up and still be able to, you know, keep your important stuff going, like your refrigerator, communications, those sort of things. Today's grid down solution has brought the price of LifePo battery backups way, way down uh, to 52.5 cents per watt hour. That's barely one third of what many power stations cost that have the latest generation of LifePo 4 batteries, which have more charge cycles than the old NMC batteries, significantly more charge cycles, I should say, which also means that more people can afford these types of units like the Dabson DBS 2300 and the DBS 3000 that we're currently showcasing. All right, Chris, tell us about the basic specs of this uh, Dabson unit here. So the DBS 2300, this is the base unit. Uh, it has a 2200 watt uh, AC continuous output inverter in it, uh, which can briefly surge to 4400 watts. But depending on what the device is, that might only be say 15, 30 seconds. But it does have a boost feature where you can boost the continuous AC output to 3000 watts. However, just like everything else in life, when you make a choice, you give something else up. And what you give up is the pure sine wave uh, output for the 120 volts AC. So what that means is that if you boost it to 3000 watts of continuous AC output power, you can't plug anything in like computers, even a refrigerator that has a motherboard. Anything that has a logic board, the power's dirty and would not be good for that type of scenario. But what you can do is hook up portable heaters and it'll run them all day long at that increased wattage because it, it doesn't have logic boards, doesn't have any internal electronic components that are moving. So 2,330 watt hours battery capacity. We added another 3,000 watt hours of battery capacity with the DBS 3000. The DBS 2300 comes in the box with an adapter for solar panels, an adapter for a 12 volt car port, and a power cord. So you can charge it by AC. The DBS 3000 expansion battery comes with this connector so that you can link the two batteries together in series and comes with an additional solar panel adapter. So Chris, what are we looking at as far as the inputs and outputs here? So on the left side of the DBS 2300 base station, there are two ports for connecting expansion batteries. So on the DBS 3000 expansion battery, of course, there is a port to connect it to the base station, as well as inputs to charge it by AC power, as well as solar power. And this is kind of cool because you can be drawing power off the base station while simultaneously charging the expansion battery. And that's a really cool feature. On the front of the DBS 2300, there's an LED light with several different settings. We have two USB-A standard ports, but we have a fast charge USB-A port, a fast charge USB-C port, two more USB-C ports, two 12 volt barrel ports, a 12 volt car port, and an Anderson hookup 
which can be sent to any number of different devices, typically solar panels, but can also be used for different types of AC power uh, blocks that you can plug in and charge directly from the wall. So on the right side of the DBS 2300 base station, there are five AC 120 volt outputs. You can see that we have a fan plugged in. And the reason that we have a fan plugged in is because the heat index was 106 degrees when we came out here earlier. So you may have noticed that our shirts are a, a little sweaty, but uh, such is life at this time of year in Florida. We also have some additional ports and buttons on the side so we can input a solar panel here. We can change it from slow to fast charge. We can change the station from standard output mode to eco mode. We can plug in a direct AC cable with no external power block uh, to charge it. And we have a reset here, essentially a GFI. Yeah, speaking of sweaty, thanks for letting me stand closer to the fan. <laughs> <laughs> so realistically, in, in a real world situation, what can this run? Well, I think as men, we're all familiar uh, with our wives turning on their hair dryers and tripping circuit breakers okay, <laughs> in the yep. house, or at the very least tripping a GFI and whatnot. So with uh, 2,200 watts of continuous AC output power, uh, women can go ahead and run all of those types of uh, devices, you know, their hair curlers, what about us guys? What uh, can we run? blow dryers. Well, <laughs> we don't really need them, right? So, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, but as I mentioned earlier, what you can run, and obviously there's a significant range of uh, wattage that refrigerators can be, yep. but you're looking at somewhere between 15 and 30 continuous hours of powering the average refrigerator. But again, if you're trying to conserve energy, you're in a grid down situation, you wouldn't run your refrigerator off of this for 30 hours straight. Right. You'd run it 45 minutes a day, as well as your other stuff that you're running, like you know lights and powering up your devices and whatnot. Yeah. Or Long, maybe some power tools if you need to, right? Yeah, power tools as well. Long story short, I mean, other than uh, 240 split phase appliances like your oven and, and your dryer and whatnot, um, it, it can run everything else in your house most likely. Uh, you might have like a higher end microwave that could potentially exceed uh, the output of 2200 watts. But in most cases, if you take the 240 stuff out of the equation, mm -hmm. you should be able to run, you know, 90, 95% of the rest of the devices in your house, although not simultaneously. Gotcha. All right. So Chris, one of the most important questions, what are we going to spend on this? So this package right now is on Amazon as a bundle. Uh, list price is $3,299, but there's a $500 off coupon that Dabson has said is going to be there for quite a period of time. So $2,799. And that's how we got, you know, $2,799, 5,330 watt hours equals 52.5 cents per watt hour. Again, can't stress it enough. That's just an incredible price point for LifePo 4 batteries. Everything has its pros and cons. How do these Dabson units stack up in that regard? You know, we touch a lot of power stations, an awful lot of power stations. And, you know, I've stewed over this trying to find shortfalls. And the only improvement that I can think of for this is that a set of wheels uh, with a luggage style handle on it so you could tote it around. That's about the only thing it doesn't have compared to, say, some of the other uh, competitors units. Because these aren't necessarily light. They've got some weight to them. Yeah, well, so that's an interesting comment. These are extremely dense units. So for 5,330 watt hours of battery capacity, that's actually one of the pros. Extremely compact compared to other units. And so if you want to tuck these off in the corner somewhere, or you want to take them with you in your RV, the small footprint, that, that's a major bonus uh, for these Dabson units. So not only are like the, the cheapest per watt hour for life pole fours, they're, they're extremely compact. Uh, you know, I, I don't have Alzheimer's, but I get some timers. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I forget. So I wanted to make sure that I had my notes here as well. Uh, another really important uh, pro for these guys, Denny, deadly quiet. I mean, when you start plugging stuff into power stations and the fans kick in to cool them down, I, I tell you what, some of them sound like it's, you know, a jet plane fixing to take <laughs> off. These ones are so quiet. Uh, actually have never touched a power station of any size that's as quiet as these units are. Another thing that's a, a, a major distinction between this and the other units, a lot of times you'll see uh, power stations as advertised that they go from zero to 80% charge in 90 minutes. And then they typically take another 90 minutes to get that last 20%. Not the case with this guy. 
these batteries charge to 98% within 90 minutes and they, they charge up the balance uh, in as little as another, say, 20, 30 minutes. So extremely fast charging units. The other thing is because the batteries are the LifePo 4, uh, you're talking somewhere, say, between four and 5,000 charge cycles. Uh, so you're looking at, you know, upwards of a 15 year lifespan where these batteries will maintain That's a long it. lifespan. Boy, howdy, is it ever, you know, you're talking 80 plus percent capacity. And, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, I come from a tech background and I hate apps that are super convoluted and uh, aren't user friendly and intuitive. The app for this guy uh, is very simple, straightforward, utilitarian, does exactly what it's supposed to, but not everything else. And, you know, I know from hearing people complain about technology and then they come to me because they think that I can solve their problem when, you know, my experience in the tech industry isn't necessarily with end user devices. Uh, they get really frustrated with convoluted stuff. So this is super clean. And bottom line is, is we'll put all the speeds and feeds down below in the description. We'll put a link to it on Amazon. There you go. The Dabs and DBS 2300 and 3000. Excellent power backup solution. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment, share, all that stuff. We really appreciate it when you help us with the YouTube algorithm. And thanks for tuning in.